right, I just wanted to say I was trying to edit my video and I think I cut off the beginning and I want to say hello. My name is Michelle and I love cross stitch. I've been doing it for quite a while and I think that's basically the part that I cut out was me introducing myself and saying thank you. Thank you so much for watching. All right, here's the rest of it. Uh, just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching me and giving me a try. Um, what I want to do today is go ahead and show you what um, has been keeping me motivated and how I'm working this year through my stuff. I do apologize for the, the ring light coming up, but I wear glasses and I have to. So, um, I, of course, have been, have been cross-stitching for quite a long time. Um, I did it when I first got into the service and when I was overseas in the Philippines, a lady there taught me how to cross stitch. Um, I did a little bit of those little home ones that you get from like Walmart or whatnot, um, little bitty kits that I did at home and I played around with it, but it wasn't until I got into the service and the lady really taught me how to cross stitch did I actually start cross stitching. And this one right here is the Lord's Prayer. I had given it to my mamaw. And um, once she passed away, they gave it back to me. And then we took it and we got it framed. Now, I'll show you. I'll bring it down closer at some point. But uh, not today, but later on. Um, I learned a lot of things on how they are to be like framed. Uh, like this is a white linen and I carried all my threads and you can see all of that. But to me, it was my first real big, big, big project that I completed. Once I got out of the service, I did some here and there, but not a huge amount. And I would say about two years ago, I really got back into cross stitching. I tried to start a floss tube uh, channel but it, I got busy, I got work, and I was working 24-7, so it was kind of hard for me to continue. Uh, now I'm just working part-time and uh, wanted to bring not only cross-stitching, but I have uh, also a quilting that I want to also bring. And then, of course, I have started a um, kind of a weight loss journey. So those are the three subjects right now that I hope to start making videos for. Um, but anyways, let's get to the cross stitching. So I think the last two years I have tried whip go, which basically is uh, whip go is just like bingo. It has um, 24 or 25 spots because you spell out whip go across the top and then I have five down and and the middle one uh, is free, just like bingo. Uh, and so you put in all your projects that you want to complete for the year, and then it's your decision on what kind of goals you want to set. Sometimes you can set how many months or not how much, how many hours that you cross stitch. Some of them you do, um, a certain percentage. Some of them you want to complete. So it's really up to you because it's your board and it's your rules. So, um, that is the basis of some of my whip goes or my cross stitch is I have 24 projects on there. Uh, of course, some of them are listed a few times and I'll show you which ones those are. And then um, above and beyond the whip go, I do, uh, I join the uh, group called Whip Warriors. It used to be No New Starts. So they have this thing where you can do Focus on 23 projects in 2023. So I'm doing 2323, hence the name of the video. And so I have my 23 projects and I want to show those to you today. Now I do understand we're already a week in into March. So what I'll do is I'm learning the process of how to edit. So when I can, I will insert things in to show you where I was at the very beginning. So Let's cross our fingers and hope that I have learned that. But um, in that Whip Warriors, as I said, they have um, have you concentrate on 23 different projects. Not all at once, so forth. But they have challenges and stuff in order to get you stitching on those projects. So I mainly do more of the side one that's called a road trip. So it's like you're traveling from one place to another 
and you're doing so many stitches in between and boom, there you are um, at the end. And then you've stitched so many stitches, you know, like they'll have you travel from one store to another store. And let's say that's 200 stitches. So you would stitch 200. You'd let them know that you've arrived at that store. You would go ahead and continue stitching to the next store. In the meantime, they're going to tell you, hey, you've bought a floss. So stitch 50, 50 stitches. And so that's kind of how it does. And then you do sightseeing and then you set up a camp because it's a road trip. And based on how many stitches you stitch in a month. So it's really quite fun. It's really kept my stitching going. And so um, that is what I'm doing. Now, last month I made it to the end of my leg uh, way early. So I was able to jump back into the Whip Warrior main group and do a couple of those things. Uh, like I did categories, I think. And so I think I might do that again this year, but or this month, but I'll kind of go over what all that meant. But anyways, it's six minutes in. I know you're tired of me yakking, but I just wanted to sh give you the premises of how I was getting all my stitching done. So one of the very first stitches that I have, I have notes here, is my patriotic trio from waxing moon so this is uh one i've been working on it's it was on my whip go two times because i have already done this one so i needed this one and this one so uh it did come up on my whip go for march but what i also did is you know as i was telling you i was in my whip where i'm on a road trip so in my whip go it picks two things that I want to concentrate on that month. And so usually what I do is I concentrate on one of them through half of my road trip, basically. And then the second half, or once this is completed, I go for that second whip through that month. And so I've been getting a lot done. And then, as I said, when you stop at shops and you purchase like floss or you purchase the the admins will give you what you purchase and how many stitches you need to purchase i actually take another whip out like a smaller one and i stitch on that and so in january that was what this was so this one as you can see i've gotten pretty good far i've gotten far i'll go ahead and i will load up where i was in january here hopefully i'll figure out how to do that but anyways so this is where I'm at right now. So I have completed this one in January. And then uh, this one is at the very end of March. Or I'm sorry, the very end of February, beginning of March is what I've been uh, doing with this one. So anytime I had to stop and do so many stitches for uh, purchases I've made, this is the one that I worked on. And it's actually got me really far and got me a finish in January with this American one. So I was pretty excited about that, but that's where I'm at. And so this month, it's my whip go. And so I'm planning on finishing up this one. And then I am completely done with this. So once I'm done with this one, what's going to happen is I can put something in its place. So that's a way for me to get a new start. But for right now, I haven't decided on anything. I'm just working towards this one. And this is kind of where I'm at. So... The second one on my list is the one that I was working in January or February as my shopping kind of stitches. And that is the year in the woods. So this is what that looks like. I'm sure everybody, one, everybody knows what this one looks like. Love it. I have all of them. So what I'm wanting to do is put it all in one piece, as you can see. This is a very low count, just like my other one, I believe. If I'm not stitching on 32 count... I'm probably stitching on 25 and I'm stitching one over one. And that's what I was doing on this one. I don't remember all the names and all that other stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just because I have just started Floss 2. So this is where I'm at with the Year in the Woods series. And this one is the one that I'm using for my shopping this month. So anytime that I have to do shop, um, uh, shopping uh, stitches, this is the one that I'm going to do. So this is where it was in January, and this is where I'm at now. So if I put in two pictures, that means that I also stitched on it in February with the categories uh, for the road trip. So 
but and I believe I did stitch on this one so I'll probably have two pictures of this one so you'll get to see those and I love this series I'm all going to put it all on one big huge uh, thing uh, I'm definitely have the reindeer I'll probably start that one next so that I have all three of those the this one and then the swans and then we'll go with the next set and I'm going to put it all on one I think they're absolutely wonderful and I love them the next one that I have is Shores of Hawkeron Hollow. I was hoping I could find, is it Shores? No, it's Cherry Blossoms. I apologize. So this one I found in the Ultimate Cross Stitch Asia. I love everything in this book. And if I could cross stitch everything in this book, I definitely would. But right now, the one that I'm working on is this one. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that they did in this one. And that is make it into a pillow. And here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? And then these little guys are actually um, sequins. And you go around them. And that's how you get them onto the fabric. I think it's just beautiful. There's a lot of crinic like in this one. So I'm gonna do the same thing that they did here is make it into a pillow, but I wanna show you what it looks like. And so far, this is where I'm at. Now, this is where I was in January when I started this year. And then last month, what I did is we had categories that asked for, I think our categories, our letters had to start with a J. And this one was man-made or something. I forget what it was, but I made a Japanese lantern. And so that's how I got that one done and got a little bit further. Loving this piece. This one again it's a 25 count it's one over one i think i'm really enjoying it now when i first started out you'll see a couple of these i had them on just regular 14 or 18 count ada um i think most of mine are 14 count in here so if i have an ada it's 14 count and i went and started experimenting with lugana and absolutely love the 25 count one over one and so that's kind of where I went with every time I pick something else up. Uh, the next one on my thing is, and this one will be number four, is A Witch in the Now. So this one came out of a book. My mom passed away and she had this and so did my aunt uh, who just recently gave, gave me this book because she moved. She got married and she moved and she gave me a lot of her quilting fabric and then she gave me a lot of her um like uh cross stitch and stuff and so this is one of them and the one i'm doing is this one so it's the witch and the owl i thought it would be really cute for halloween and it says when the owl and the witch together are seen there's mischief brewing on halloween so that's the one i'm doing i think i worked on this one last year or I'm sorry, last month, uh, because it was for, like, I think this one was something with a J that was, I, I, I can't remember all of them, but I think I did it because of the pumpkin, so the jack-o'-lantern is how, or what I did say. So, this is as far as I've gotten, and the only thing I did extra was this, this right here, this owl part of it. So I'm gonna show a picture of where it was at the beginning of the year. And as I said, all I think I've done really is this part of the owl. So I'm really loving this. Again, that one is a small count. It's 25 count and it is Lugana and it's one over one. And I did touch that one a little bit in February with the categories. So now we're moving on to number five. And number five was on my whip go, and I was actually vacationing at the same time in January. I went to go see my children, and we spent, um, like, right after uh, New Year's Eve, we spent our little Christmas time together out in the cabin. And uh, this, since it took me six hours to go, this is what I worked on, and I finished it in January. And this one is called The Colorful Eagle. 
I think he's gorgeous. Now you gotta remember I'm a veteran, so I am so totally pulled but, uh, to anything is patriotic. And he was gorgeous. I love it. I think it's, um, is it Kitty and Me Designs? I'm not 100% sure, but you can see this is where it was the Ada and it's probably 14 count or 18, it's one or the other. And I did finish him in January. He was, oh, I so enjoyed him. And what I'm going to do is I have a patriotic wall in my house. And it has it has a picture of me in boot camp. It has my father when he was in Vietnam. And then it has my grandfather. He was in World War II. And then my son went into the Air Force. So he, um, I have his boot camp picture in there too. So what I plan on doing is putting that on, like I'm gonna find a big star and I'm gonna mount it on that star and then put it up on my patriotic wall. Excited. Excited. Uh, the next one, number six that I was doing was, it was called, it was for, it was a little mushrooms and I was gonna do temperatures cause I've been doing temperatures. Well, I say I've been doing them. I haven't completed them. So I think what I'm gonna do instead, because I am doing a temperature quilt this year, that instead of doing that temperature mushrooms for 2023, I think that I'm going to throw in my 2022, and these are dragonflies, and just work on this and finish this up instead of the mushrooms, because I am doing a temperature quilt. So I think I'm gonna finish this up, and this is going to be, um, one thing that I work on to get it done this year for last year. Um, I love dragonflies and I like to do the high and low of the days. Um, so that's why you see like half green, half yellow, half, you know, those colors. But I think I would really enjoy also seeing like the one color. So I may do this one again, just not this year. That was a lot of stitching because there's a lot of stitches in here. It isn't just like four or five, like with the temperature tree or uh, like with the mushrooms or even with the flowers that I was going to do. This one has a lot of stitching in one place, but it is beautiful. And so I think I'm going to slide this one into that spot, which will be number six, instead of doing that one and starting a whole new project. That's what I think I'm going to do. Uh... My oldest whip, and I don't know if I have a beginning picture of that. If I do, I'll insert it here. Um, my oldest, my oldest, very oldest whip that I have with me right now is Teresa Winsler, the Egyptian sampler. So I had bought this one. Um, my father passed away in 2011. So while we were in the house, that December, I started cross-stitching this because we had to set with him and he was on hospice and it's a real difficult time for us. Um, and so that's when I started this one. And then once my father passed away, I went back home to Delaware, things progressed or whatnot, I stopped and now I have started back up on it. And this is where I am at. Now, it is, I love it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That is a lot of intricate work in there. Now, I will say this is where it was in the beginning. And then in January, this is my whip go call. So, this is why I really concentrated on this. And you can tell the difference. Now, Teresa loves blends. I will tell you, almost every one of these in here is a blend. And she also loves backstitch to make the, uh, to make the, um, the piece come alive. Okay. So this is the difference between a backstitch and not. You see how this right here one has all the backstitch. So that's what is making this just pop and look absolutely stunning. She has a couple of, um, uh, specialty stitches here and here and i think i have one on his jewel here and then of course we're going to be adding beads all along the way but i'm waiting on the beads to a little bit later this one was one over one these little ones here 
Now, I am loving the stitch. Now, I will say it came up on my whip go for February. But my go, my rules, my board, my rules. And I switched it for something else because one month of this was enough focus for me. So I'll definitely probably put it in in April again. It is on my whip go board four times because it is to be done this year. And I'm going to frame it and we're going to hang it up on the wall. So I love this piece. It's just absolutely stunning once it gets done. And I mean, just look at it. Look how pretty it is. And that back stitch just makes it come alive. So that one is for my oldest whip. The next one, which is number eight, is Autumn Queen. And this one <laughs> is on my whip go once. And it is on my whip go to get 50% of it done. That's a big go. But anyways, uh, if I have the opportunity to show you what the whip go, what um, the Autumn Queen looks like, I'll put it in here. And then I'll also put in um, where it was in January, which basically February, I did this one as a jeweled queen, autumn queen at the, I think it was seasons. So I, I kind of cheated with the word jeweled because we all know that she's going to have lots of jewels. And I think I was just here and then I added in all of this pink and I was coming down on her dress. I want to do all of them. I want to do the spring, summer, winter, and fall queens, and then hang them up and pull them down periodically. This one, of course, is on 32 count, and it's just on a white linen. I'm going to do all my queens on a white 32 count linen. Excuse me. The next one I have is winter queen. This is what she's going to look like. And then, of course, this is what she was like at the beginning of the year. And I keep pointing, and I'm really hoping that I figured out how to put this stuff up. And this is where I'm at on this one. Now, this one has not been called yet this, this, this year. But she is also on my whip go to get 50% done. It's a lot of stitching. But, hopefully, I'll be able to get that done. The next one is number 10, and this one is the Peppermint Purple Sal from 2021, because it wasn't last year, it was the year before. This is what it looks like, okay? And then at the beginning, of, oh, it's the same. So this was what it looks like at the beginning of the year, it was exactly this one. So what I have been doing is, I have this on my whip go, I want to say three times because I want to have it completed because what I was doing is this is kind of like a marriage sampler for my, um, not a sampler, but a marriage thing for my daughter. She got married and she got married in the fall and she had these beautiful colors. So what I did is I took, I took a variegated floss and I forget what the number was. I'll have to pull it out next time. And it had gold, brown, orange, and green in it. So I had those four colors. So what I decided to do was like on each one of these corners would be that main color. Like this one is gold. This one is brown. I will assume since green is coming in here, this one's green. And this one will be orange since there's a lot of orange on here. And what I did is I took a lighter color and I tried to make them fade into the middle where it gets brighter. And then this is all going to be the variegated floss. So... This is her name up here, and then I'm going to put her marriage date down here, and then I planned on putting a couple of, like, fall motifs. So that's why it's on the whip go board three times. Once to get all the, the black work done. The second one is to go ahead and put in her date down here, and then the third time on the whip go is going to be putting in all the customization that I wanted to do. I don't know how this piece is going to turn out, but she'll be married for two years in October, and, well, I really need to get it done. <laughs> it's supposed to be for her wedding, but it wasn't. All right. Now, number 11. Now, this was the whip go called for February, and so I went to this one first. And as you saw, January was my colorful eagle, and I finished it. 
and then 25% on my Egyptian sampler. That one was done. So then February was my Emma Condon one, which I don't have the book in here. I don't see it. No, but it was on my Emma Condon one. It's in that book that is cross stitch for the soul. And I want to say it's like page number 10 or 11. It's, oh, here it is. So it's in this book. And the one I did was this one. And I want to do lots of them in these books. I think they're so pretty. Is this one. Where it says, be not afraid of going slowly. Be afraid of standing still. So this one was called in uh, February. And through the road trip, I was able to complete it. And here it is. I finished it completely. Now, I did say down here, like I said, Chinese proverb, but I just put my initials, and I don't know if I'm going to frame it or if I'm going to make a pillow, but this one is also on a 25 or 28 Lugana, and it is um, one over, no, this one's two over two, it looks like. Yeah, it's two over two, so it must be that. I don't remember. It's a little tight and a little bulky, but I really do like it. I, ha I haven't decided if I'm going to put it in a pillow, if I'm going to frame it. But this is what it looked like at the beginning of the year. And then, of course, I just finished it. So, so far, I have two finishes. And the other whip go call for this month in February was, let me think. Oh, I know what it is, and I'll show you when it's coming up. It's one of my favorites. So, the next one that was called, or the number 12 of my 23, is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. I was in the Navy, so, of course, this was the Hawk Run Hollow that I was drawn to. I also have Christmas, but I have not uh, done anything uh, with the Christmas one. But here it is at the beginning of the year. And then here it is now. I only have one thing done. Now this one is on a 28 and it is one over one. I know it was 28 because I bought it when I was visiting my daughter and we went to Joanne's and so I got it. It's the first time that I learned to bake in the oven, you know, to try to get my own kind of um, mold, uh, you know, Oh, I loved it. Oh, it's pretty. Anyways, it looks a lot better here on, on the video. But here it is. And I did use this for categories last month. And so I filled in like the top of these ways. So you'll see. That's what I did different here is I filled the rest of this in. So this one hasn't been called on my whip go. If it is called, I'm only doing two weeks on it. I know this one is going to be a long one, but again, what I wanted to do is I really wanted to finish my daughter's um, wedding one. I also wanted to finish the Egyptian one. And what else? I think the rest of them, except for one of the last ones. As you can see, I'm going from small to big. One of the last ones is a big one. Uh, it's close to a finish that I'll probably go ahead and want to finish that one up this year too. So my number 13, and I'm only supposed to get 25 done on this one, 25%. Uh, it is a huge, huge piece. And it is called Pilgrim by Long Dog. And here's the what it was. And then here's where it was in January. I did work on this one in categories. And basically all that I did is fill in this right here. And then I did some more of this just to kind of pull it together here in the rest of the house. So that's what I did in my categories. This one is getting 25%. I, I don't foresee me doing it because he's he's big. So I don't foresee me getting 25% done, but he's on here and I'll try to work towards that. 
I am doing really well with my whip go for my cross stitch because of the whip warriors. It has really helped me focus and concentrate uh, on getting my stuff done. So that's why I think I'm doing really well with my whip go is because the whip warriors in the road trip is really getting me to focus and work on stuff. Now I will say I got to my leg early, probably the first or second week of February. So I've kind of been not as motivated the last couple of weeks because um, they have things to kind of keep you going. That's why I did the categories in the main group. But the road trip, um, I was just doing stitches for a table and chairs to go to like a lobster event. And it was just stitching 500. So it wasn't as motivating or as fun as if I get to travel and do 300 stitches, get to the store, and then I get to I get to stitch for certain things that I bought at the store and then I get to travel again. So I never realized that just those small amounts, just how motivating and how it just keeps me going because I guess it's a small goal for me to reach. And then um, now we've started the second leg. Now I'm ready to get into that, the next leg and uh, get going on that. So I have been working now February. My other whip go pull was this one. And it's inspiration by Rosewood Manor. This one I bought in for like a memorial for my mom. So my mom passed away in April of 2020. And it was quite hard. It was really a hard time for me. So I had tried a couple of different stitches and one of them is in here that I decided to go ahead and keep. But the first one I tried for her was Blackbird Designs and it was the Christmas Garden. And I just couldn't, I couldn't feel her in it. So I was like, no, I don't wanna do that. So I stopped it and I did purchase this one and I just put it aside for a long time. And then I found another one in a magazine, which you'll see in my pile. And I started that one. And um, then it seemed it wasn't quite, it didn't quite fit my mom. This one feels like, and, and, and it fits mom just perfectly. And it's a big piece. So February was called and I only have to get 25%. So I just have to get this first, this first line done right here. And then that's 25% of that. And this is where it is. It is absolutely gorgeous with all those flowers and the vines and everything. And it reminds me of when I was in the service and I would come home, my mom and my stepfather would have all these flowers everywhere. And then it got to the point where flowers came up and she never even had to plan anything. They just voluntarily came up. And um, I love that. I love that about her. And she was just, I just really miss her. And these flowers really, really hone in on just that beauty that I feel when I remember those flowers, being with my mom, how much of an inspiration she was to me. And every time I stitch on this, it's just absolutely I'm in awe just looking at it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, God, it's so pretty. So this one definitely has the feels for my mom. And this one is supposed to get 25% done in, in February. As you can see, I haven't made it yet, but I'm gonna keep working on it because I just love it. So what I'll probably do is sometime in the future, uh, in those months when I'm traveling to, to and from places in the road trip, and I go to the shopping, this is probably something I'll use to stitch to get me to where I need to go and get that 25% done. The next one, which will be number 15, is With Thy Needle. I thought this was just a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. I am not a sampler. I realize that. I think they're all beautiful and everything. Um, and I just don't know what draws me to this one to do. But I learned with the Christmas garden that samplers just aren't my thing. So 
but I am working on this one. I think it's uh, really pretty. Now, this is what it looked like at the beginning of the year. And it hasn't been called yet, but I did work on it last month for categories. And I was really upset with how this one started out. I started out, and it's a, it's like a 25 count again. And I was starting two over two, so they're really bulky stitches. So you can basically see what, what I had done before the new year. And then now I, I've been trying one over one. And I think I like the one over one much better. So depending on how it looks, I may take these out and redo them, or I may just leave it and just keep on going. I'm not that particular on it, and it's just something that's gonna hang in my wall. So I don't know if I'm gonna take them out and redo them with one over one. But I just think this is a gorgeous piece. And so that one's that one. The next one is called Sweet Lullaby. So here's that picture. And then I have not done anything at all this year. And it's one of my big pieces. And this is it. And if you remember looking at it, this is where the rose is, is it, in the hat. So I haven't done anything yet this year with this one. So there's no sense putting one at the beginning of the year because that's it. The next one I have is called Egyptian Elephant. Here it is. And I did work on this one in February for categories. And I had a huge amount of ninja stitches in this one. So ninja stitches, of course, are stitches that are here and there that you need to fill in. And that's basically where I was. So I'm just still filling in a little bit of those ninja stitches. And then I can continue on with my Egyptian elephant. But again, another huge piece. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be huge. So I know that this one's going to take me a while, but I'm concentrating on my other big pieces this year of that Egyptian um, sampler and then the uh, one for my daughter. Um, this, this, uh, this one that's done by, this one is, is also a big, huge piece too my lullaby one it's going to take forever to finish that so i know that i'm going to be doing this a couple of years and, and that's okay so the last one of the, uh, another one that i have that i was saying that i did for my mother and then um decided that it was not going i'm looking for the picture because this one i don't have another thing of Oh, I don't know where this picture is. If I do find it, I'm going to put it in here. And then I'm going to show you where I was at the beginning of the year. And then I have worked on this one also. And it was some of my shopping ones. So I uh, also love this one. I think when I was going through it, I was um, really interested in doing this one for my mom. As I went through it, I still love it, but I wasn't feeling my mom like I am in that inspiration one. So this one I, is on my whip go for this month. So this one and the, what was this one this month? Oh, the Patriotic Trio. Those are the two. The Patriotic Trio is for me to finish, and this one is for me to get 50%, which I think I can because it really is these beautiful tulips right here. And then there's words in the middle. It's a poem. And then there's a lot of these little Smyrna. It comes all the way through. Like it almost looks like lattice work. So it's really big on the side. And then in the middle where the words are, it goes away. It fades away. And then it comes back when you do the other side. A big piece do i think i'm going to get 50 percent done this month no this will probably be one that i'll have to use later on in the year um when i do shopping and have to throw in some stitches this will be the one for it uh, again if it's not ada it's 25 probably count lagana and it is 
This one is 25 and it's two over two, I think. So that's what this one is. And then my last big, big piece, which will bring me to number 19, is this sow. So this sow we did in 2020. I can't say the name. I think it's Weinenberg Winter Sow. Uh, I haven't touched it at all yet, but it is very close for me being done. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? So that's when I was doing Ada. As you can see, it's Ada. And I have had fun doing all of those and I can't wait to get it done. I love how they threw in, uh, besides just the snowflakes, they threw in the trees, the fox, a little robin, deers, you know, an owl, bunny, moose. I just, I loved working on this. And this is the one that I'll probably go ahead and finish when it gets called on my whip go because it's only, it's fairly close. Now it's going to take me a little bit of time to do that. I think I only have four sessions left and um, then I'm done with it, but I'm excited. Now, as you can see, I, I am doing 23 and 23, but I've only got to 19. And so I have places that I can put starts in. And so I did want to go to put in the, what is that, uh, cottage, country cottages. I can't think of what the name of it is, but I'm sure once you see it, you'll know it. These little guys. So I'm doing every month. This one I cut uh, down right after the house and made it into a pillow. January and February was this way. March, I did the whole big one and I'm wanting to make a bigger pillow. And so I put these on my list because those are the only three months I have done. So I will go ahead, slide those in and do those. And that would put me at 20. And then number 21 would be, I love, uh, is it Teresa Cogart's her Halloween, her Halloween. She had a book that she come out last year and I bought that and I want to start that one. And so that would put me at 21. And then at Christmas time, I gave my nieces a dobo. And then I started doing, you know, the season kind of things. Like I did a, um, a Valentine's one, an Easter one. I was in the middle of doing July. I didn't finish them for Christmas, but I gave them the rest. So I figured this year I'll do uh, the 4th of July in summer. And I will give those to them. So I slotted those in on here that I can start. So that would be number 22. So it leaves me one open spot. So I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room in order to fill that 23rd spot that if I find anything. And I will say Lila Studio has a gorgeous piece that she brought out. And if I can find it, I'll insert it here. She has a gorgeous piece that I want to do. And then there's one more that I saw and I can't remember whose it was. But anyways, I have left my space one open. Now, if I finish something, like I did do the patriotic trios, I will probably finish those. Those are smalls. So I could technically probably move up my niece's gifts, you know, the little Dobo pillows. I can probably move those up into that small and it would open up a spot. And I did get the Emma Condon one, which is a large. So I can put in another large piece, which could probably be the Halloween one from Teresa. And then I did finish a medium piece, which is that uh, colorful eagle. And I can put a medium one in there. So these are, th I'm making room. My whole goal this year was to get rid of all of them, except for my Summer Queens, Autumn Queen, uh, Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Of course, the larger ones like Pilgrim, The Inspiration, With Thy Needle, The Sweet Lullaby, The Egyptian Elephant, The Child's Prayer. So next year when I do 24 and 24, I have so many new starts if I finish all of these. So I'm trying to work through all my whip goes so that all my whips so that there's nothing outstanding. But that's what I got. And so hopefully what I'll do is I'll come back 
and I'm hoping to come back every month and give you some updates of what I'm doing and how quickly that this, um, this Whip Warriors is helping and also combined with the Whip Go. So I'm really enjoying that process. I know that the Whip Warriors uh, Facebook group is closed right now, but come the end of the year, they're going to open it back up. And I would say if you, if, if the motivation for your Whip Go is just not enough and you're just not finding motivation to get things done uh, and you like just doing little bits and pieces at a time to keep you motivated. I would say Whip Warriors is definitely something that you would want to do. Now, I've never tried anything like that before, but I'm totally enjoying it. And the Whip Go, usually by February, by March or April, I'm done with it and I'm just not doing well. But I am continuing on this and it's, it's getting my whips done and it's getting my whips gone and I'm able to start taking them to the framer or start doing finishes with them. So hopefully... Hopefully I'll have found something with my Colorful Eagle to get that done and my Emma Condon one in order to get that either in a pillow or a frame. So hopefully next month I'll be able to show that to you. I just want to thank you so very much for tuning in, seeing what I have, and hopefully I'll be able to be a little bit better. But, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I bought a house. We're buying a house and we're moving. So I may be a little bit jumbled in everything in the next couple of months, but yes, we bought a house and we are going to be moving in the next month or two. Also, I'm going on vacation on an Alaskan cruise uh, in May. So that's my birthday, my birth month, and it is also my sweetheart's birthday month. And so we decided that we were going to go on a cruise together and we decided on an Alaskan cruise. So we're really excited. If anybody's ever gone on one, let me know what else I need to take. He just tells me I need rain gear. I need short sleeves and long sleeves and I'm going to layer up and hopefully that'll be it. Um, I'm sure I need other things or whatnot. It's in May. So I know it's going to be a little bit chilly, um, but uh, I may crochet me some hats so I can have some nice hats and stuff on my ears. I may do that. Uh, but anyways, I just want to say thank you and I'll be back in less than a month because April 1st will come very quickly and maybe I'll have everything ready for y'all. All right, thanks.